Ah, oh, say, I oh, say. I do declare you are tuned into the failing frequency. My oh, name. My. Oh, goodness. My name is Ethan. Name is Michael Julius Smart. <laughs> uh, we do declare that we do like talking about Star Trek. We do. <laughs> oh, dear. Julius? It's not, you know, I, I, I tried to invent, <laughs> I tried to think of a fancy, you know, Twain name. Um, <laughs> but my middle name is not Julius. Uh, so there you go. Uh, uh, yeah, l yeah, uh, <sighs> fairly frequency. We like Star Trek. <laughs> we do. And what, what, what track are we talking about this week? Um, uh, well, we, uh, well, we got uh, an uh, auction, auction news, auction updates, mm. and uh, buried treasure. Uh, we mm. got um, Captain Picard, more like Captain Dick's Hard. Ooh. Hey. Uh, ooh, <laughs> good. I didn't feel good. No. Uh, uh, we got, ooh, books, books for nerds being announced. Mm. Uh, and then we're going to be talking about this week's episode of uh, Star Trek Lower Decks, the season four finale. Mm -hmm. uh, I have genuinely no idea what this episode's called. Old Friends, New Planets. That makes sense. Yep. Yep. When you've uh, seen the episode, it makes sense. Yes. Yeah. But before all that, how are we doing, Ethan? Good, oh, and good, time good. codes below, you know, all, all the usual shit. But time, all that good uh, you know, stuff. how are we doing? Uh, good. I re when I was listening back to last week's episode, uh, I was uh, like, I talked at the start about how, like, I had nothing to say except for pee pee and poo poo and puke and keyboards. And I never mm. explained why <laughs> why pee pee, poo poo, and pukes. Uh, it's because we have a baby. We have a baby. We we don't. We don't. We don't. Um, no, you do. me and Mike. <laughs> this no, one I have a baby. It's upstairs, and like it's we reach that. There is a stage, and it's another thing that they don't really warn me, warn you about. Where that's literally the only thing you talk about. It's one of the things mm. I'm looking forward to least about hanging out with other parents. Yeah. And, and um, you, you've been wrestling with a, another child. You were saying to me yeah, um, off oh, air yeah. as well about the yeah, amount yeah, yeah. of poo time. Yeah. So yeah. So like Luaxana, Luaxana, just peep, 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 pukes, uh, poo poo, whatever. Uh, yeah. Uh, Blooming Tiberius has he's he's getting a little bit older now, and he's he's a clever kid, and he's realised that he can try at least to bargain. For things yeah and he was he was trying to he was trying to bargain he needed to go for a poo and then get in the bath and he was trying to have more poo time and less bath time and it's like just have a shit and get in the fucking bath you <laughs> just in that order just, <laughs> just yeah just like have a shit get in the bath like 20 minutes 20 minutes shit 20 minutes in the bath how about half an hour poo and then 10, maybe 15 minutes bath? It's like, whatever. Fine. Uh, how, how, how are you doing anyway? I'm okay. I'm okay. I, I'm incredibly tired. I was up very late last night in the um, my neighbor's roof. There was a storm and um, a load of water was just pouring in oh, and pouring into storm. her lounge. Um, are you are you being affected? Life. Are you being affected by Storm Kieran? I am, I am, and it's a real fucking downer. Um, yeah. I I would have loved to not be um, up bailing out a roof like it's a sinking ship, but uh, there you go. <laughs> Jesus. And and 
and in the the things that we spoke forgot to speak about last week I, I was also very I I had no news and apparently did nothing last week but I'd spent all that time playing and then forgetting I'd played um Spider-Man 2 um enjoyable game enjoyable game there's nothing cool. after when you finished but uh it's a good game we we fucked on for here for like uh seven eight minutes now um should we actually talk seven, about minutes. that's too long some star trek and, yeah uh, let's talk about some ac- actual star trek um yeah. and let's start that actual star trek by giving an update on boobs uh, Ooh. so last, woo! Uh, ev- everybody loves it. Um, so last week we talked about how the uh, prosthetic boobs for Laurel, the uh, the mm-hmm. Klingon emperor, uh, queen, mother, um, mother, uh, yes, yeah. uh, played by Mary Chifo, uh, their prosthetic boobs from that episode of Star Trek Discovery were up for sale on eBay, and they have sold. They yeah. have sold. For $2,800 uh, with like a $100 shipping fee and stuff. Uh, there were 12 bids and it ended on Monday. Uh, so yeah, someone paid uh, a pretty penny for for those boobies. And, uh, mm. and, and if you are the lucky owner of Laurel, uh, Laurel's um, backup nippled fake tits... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, then and and you want to do the right thing, then you need to return those boobs. Give return Chifo her those boobs, boobs. back. Yeah. Yes. Hashtag give Mary Chifo her boobs back. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if if that's not the plan for them, God only knows. You know, you don't want to think what the plan for them is really. Uh, I don't. At best, you don't they go into to... a glass cupboard somewhere. You don't need to think. Uh, yeah. It's, it, it'll Please just don't make th- me. Um, but speaking of uh, eBay and Star Trek history, uh, mm-hmm. interesting little found find came up over the past few days. I literally just found out about this before we started recording. The um, the <laughs> It's crazy. The production model Starship Enterprise from the original series, uh, w- which has been lost for years was found mm. on eBay. This is insane. Uh, it was it was in it's the yeah, the three foot filming miniature of the USS Enterprise, which was stolen from Gene Roddenberry's office in the seventies. Mm. Um found its way onto eBay after some people bought it from a storage it was they found it in a storage unit that they bought. Uh, yeah. they had it listed up on eBay for a thousand dollars. Um and uh, this is fun. Rare, cu- rare, custom Star Trek USS Enterprise spaceship. One of one. <laughs> one of one. Yeah. Uh, by Richard Dattin. Uh, this is crazy. Yeah. So it's it's not the the filming model because that that was like a twelve footer, I think. Yeah, oh, um, yeah, yeah. And that that's in the Smithsonian now. Uh, I, I think I remember. Um, but this this was one of the the other models used, and there's loads of photos. Maybe I can be bothered grabbing one here for of it sitting on Roddenberry's desk. Mm. Um, and wh- when I was reading through it, the model's not in in perfect condition. It's had a repaint at some point, um, so all the windows don't match up perfectly. But you know, uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, what a find. And clearly the people who put it on had no idea that it was, you know, a piece of history. They and called as it soon a as they were told. Yeah. They called it a spaceship, not a starship. Yeah. As <gasps> soon as they're told, they've they've took it off there, they've delisted it, and uh they'll be selling it in a private sale to someone with a More lot of than money likely. instead. Yeah. More than likely they'll be getting in touch with that auction house that that sold uh, fucking Shatner's wig. Yeah. Or, or they did, they did contact Rod Roddenberry as well, I believe. Um, so mm. maybe that will go home as well to its rightful home. Yeah, if you want to do the right uh, thing. Ima- imagine a world where like Chifo gets her boobs back and Roddenberry gets his dad's ship back. You know what a world that would be. Nah, that would be that would be nice. So if this wasn't the main production model, first, like I'm thinking, like. I'm thinking like that old shot of where you've got the Enterprise and like the Botany Bay, 
hmm. in the same shot. Is that the kind of thing that they likely would have used this one for? I don't know. I I, I should have I should have read up on it beforehand um, because my understanding was uh, most of the shots of the Enterprise were all done using the twelve foot or whatever it was model, and that's why it's all recycled stuff. So it's probably some season three shots that look slightly different or or shots mm. that they were like. Right, let's not destroy the um, 12-foot model, or the 12-foot model's too heavy to do this now. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, what a find. What a find. Mm-hmm. Mm. What a find indeed. I'd take um, one. Yeah, I'll have one. I'll... Uh... I'd buy that for a dollar. Um, yeah. The uh, so the next story. I actually don't want to spend too much time on this because it's kind of a, it's kind of depressing. Um, yeah. Patrick Stewart opening up in the news um, that he grieves for his non-existing relationship with his kids. Uh, apparently, he was a workaholic, and they, you know, he was estranged from his family. Um, mm. during the, the production of Next Generation, this picture of him and his kid, his kid, his son, who is in his 50s, I say his kid, his kid who's in his 50s, like his big bald head, just like his dad. Beautiful. Yep. Um, uh, one thing I did think was funny, not funny, haha, but kind of funny, haha. <laughs> um, uh, Patrick Stewart, Claims that he his his family's relationship broke apart after he had an extramarital affair, uh, which he blamed on confusion regarding who he was and what he was. That affair was with um, uh, 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 Jennifer Hetrick. Jennifer Hetrick, uh, the actor who played Vash in Next Generation. My question is. Was his confusion about who he was and what he was because he thought he was Captain Picard? Yeah. He he does say he was also somewhat addicted to sleeping pills, so maybe he was genuinely <laughs> confused. The... Yeah. I mean, you know, they were back in the day when you had to do 26 episodes a year rather than like 10 it did used to take most of people's time and they used to do 18 hour days. That's still not an excuse to cheat on your wife. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> obvious no, he's reasons. Like, he's um, like, well, I mean, I mean, like, you know, sorry, my eyes itchy. That, that was mm. the, that fucking comedian, Roseanne. She took all those sleeping pills and they made her racist. You know, maybe this, you know, maybe this something Made about... her racist. I think she <laughs> yeah. was already racist. Yeah. Well, she blamed the sleeping pills. So, yeah. and, uh, you know, maybe he, you know, took too many sleeping pills. He wakes up uh, in a fugue, still wearing his uniform on set. Mm. What the fuck? He's confused. Yeah. 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 And um, he, he's already said that he, uh, him and uh, Vash... At some point, were engaged, but never went through yeah. with it. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, because he stopped taking the sleeping pills, and he realised, wait a minute, where am I'm... I? <laughs> Who am I? Who are you? I'm yeah. not a starship captain. I am an actor with the Royal yeah. Shakespearean Company. Mm. Ah, but we won't spend too much time on that because the overall story, in general, is kind of a bummer. Um. Mm. I'll tell you what isn't a bummer. I'll tell you what's super exciting. What's exciting? Books. <laughs> Come on, reading rain by then. Go on. Uh, so Fucking Star Trek, uh, the Star Trek books people have announced that there's going to be two books coming out next year. The main focuses of, of which uh, being uh, one Ensign Row and one Dr. Gillian Taylor from Star Trek... <laughs> Three, four, the voyage home. Star Trek Four, yeah. the voyage home. The whale, the whale lady. Uh, I'm not too bothered about the, um, the you know the 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 ensign row book. It's being, um, uh, you know, uh, sort of shown as a as a as a TNG prequel to DS9, which is whatever set during uh, during the uh, Cardassian withdrawal from Bajor. But 
Okay. The Dr. Gillian book sounds interesting. It's a book in three parts. And tell me if this, this, this has like th- a bunch of my favorite things in it. One of which not even Star Trek related. Um, three errors, three mysteries. One ancient enemy question mark. Um, the first period, 2024. I'm going to do true crime horror podcast thing. Wait, she Almost. didn't come from 2024. No, <laughs> but listen for it. 2024. Almost 40 years ago, marine biologist Gillian Taylor stormed away from her dream job at Sausalito Cetacean Institute and was never heard or seen again. Now, a new true crime podcast has reopened that cold case, but investigator Melinda Silver has no idea that her search for the truth about Gillian's disappearance will ultimately stretch across time and space and attract the attention of a ruthless obsessive with his own secret agenda. Hate it. Oh, my God. Um... Uh, 2268, the USS Enterprise five-year mission is interrupted when Captain James T. Kirk and his crew set out to discover an abducted Federation scientist whose classified secrets are being sought by the Klingons as well. The trail leads to a barbaric world off-limits to both Starfleet and the Klingon Empire. And an ageless mastermind on a quest for eternity. And then the final bit, the Hmm? Osori, an ancient alien species, has finally agreed to establish relations with its much younger neighbours, the Federation, the Klingons, and the Romulans. A joint mission involving ships from all three powers, including the Enterprise A, turns explosive when one of the Osori envoys is apparently killed. Each side blames the other, but the truth lies buried deep. Nearly 300 years in the past. It's cool. I like the second one of those. The, the, the second book sounds interesting. and It's it, off limit I, to the Klingons. Yeah, there's so loads of It's full of, of tribbles. It's full of tribbles. Yeah. Full of tribbles. Ugh. They're like, don't go there. Yeah, fine. I don't, yeah. I'm not going to read them. Who cares? I'm going <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read the audio book. That one looks yeah. interesting. That that one with the three stories, um, you know, twenty twenty four. I, I can only imagine how painful. Twenty two ninety two. I can only imagine how painful listening to an audio book of a fake podcast within a book is. <laughs> <you know? laughs> oh man, that's so many layers. I love shit like that, and it's you know, yeah. it's got like you know, the 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 last one is talking about the three hundred years ago. That's an off. That's a fucking. That's a one of them. That's an hour, Rob or Ross. Oh, our Rob or Ross. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've also got still the upcoming uh, Seven of Nine book, Firewall, mm-hmm. uh, which, you know, was announced a little while ago by, oh, David Mack. That's 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 the other guy that does them. There's David Mack, Dave, David Mack, Greg Cox, Dayton Ward, and uh, Una McCormick. They do all the, they do all the Star Trek books. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nah. Uh, I I need to read some more at some point, but you know I need to find the time to do it. Uh, I still need to finish listening to the audio book of um, A Stitch in Time, uh, which I started listening to and is very good so far. Um, but then I got um, distracted with uh, a baby to, with peas and poops with a baby, but also different books that like because I was like this this requires me to concentrate somewhat, and I I got distracted listening to a pair of comedy sci-fi books called um will save the galaxy for food and will destroy the galaxy for cash um okay gr- fun fun good books. titles really fun yeah, books. Yeah. yeah yeah uh yeah but that's it uh we've cool. also you know Mir- mirror mayhem the the fortnite games are out but we don't really care about that no um then should we switch and start talking about the episode of the week? Lower Decks, Season 4, Episode 10, The Finale, Old Friends, New Planets. Yeah. Um, non-spoilers first, as usual. Ethan, what did you think of the episode? 
me, as usual, mm. um, the season finale of this series of Lower Decks is is like one of the best episodes of the series. Like it really is. Like the the it's one thing that I've I've realized you can you can kind of count on with Lower Decks is that the last couple episodes will be great. It'll be a lot of fun. Mm. I I, what do you I mean? haven't. Hmm. I, I haven't spoken to you yet. And, you know, when you messaged earlier and, and said how much you're enjoying the episode, I, I didn't message back about the episode at all, just so I could see your face when I said I didn't enjoy it or I didn't what? think it was a great episode. It's so what? What is it so? <coughs> yeah. Uh, what? I think, it's, I think it's easily, easily the weakest um, Lower Decks finale. Okay. Um. So, you know, the Titan arriving season one, them stripping the ship and saving whatever Excelsior class kind of thing it was in season two, and then all the Cali class ships arriving season three, which was my favorite. This is so low compared to those those three. Um, I I, like Solo. Solo. Yeah, it's all right. After after he's not a child anymore. Um, uh, And... The, we'll we'll get into the spoilers of it, obviously, but I, I thought it meanders far too much in the B plot, and then the A plot is massively underserved. So I don't, I don't understand, or I, I I can I can understand some of it is led by the characters, whatever insecurities that we'll get into, but the plan that they have is non-existent. It makes no sense, and it relies on two pieces of just random technology brought into the the universe, and it's just yeah. like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, the, yeah. There's definitely some explaining to do there, and I see yeah. what you mean. Like there is there is one bit in particular with the B plot where where it is a bit like it's just yeah. What, what's it doing? Yeah. <laughs> like what are we doing here, guys? Like let's let's. We we didn't need to cut away and then cut back to this. We could have just done all of this yeah. in one and then done gone somewhere else with it. Yeah, yeah. So so that's kind there. of like what, especially because I thought there's so little time spent a plot wise before you know it before what it turns into. Um, so there's so little explanation up front of it. That you have to go. Well, I guess that's just who the character is, you know. I guess that's just it. That that's just what happens in this universe to people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. What what wasn't that much of a fan, to be honest? Um, ah. I still think it's low, lower decks is is still the best or the second best new trek that we get, and this is still, you know, a bad episode of lower decks is still better than a. a an average episode of Discovery or or good episodes of most yeah. seasons of Discovery or, you know... Season two of Picard. Or, well, season three of season Picard. Three. Or, season three of Picard. Yeah, I, I'd still rate Picard. this. I'd still rate this. So, like, at the same sort of level as most of Prodigy. So, Lower Decks, I, I put higher than Prodigy. Um mm. And and th- this being a bad lower decks is still you know it's still in good territory with prodigy really. So, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, any anything else for for non spoilers or should we dive? Um, nah. Now nah, let's get in. Let's get in. Right. Episode uh, description. We pick up from last week and we can see that Locarno has built Nova Fleet, a collection of all the stolen ships and the lower deckers of those vessels. He broadcasts the entire quadrant trying to get more lower deckers to join him and showing off his defense against the main powers attacking him. A Trinar shield a Ferengi, and a Ferengi Genesis <laughs> device. Um, Mariner steals the Genesis device and goes on a run with a stolen steam cl- uh, steamrunner class ship. Uh, meanwhile, the Cerritos goes against orders and decides to try and save Mariner. Tendi gets uh, the Cerritos team an Orion warship warship to help them um through the shield but she promises her sister that she'll leave starfleet to return to work for the family after they rescue mariner 
The Cerritos disrupts the shield uh, by crashing the Orion warship into it, and Freeman and the officers take the captain's yacht in to save Mariner. Nova Fleet abandons Lacano, who chases Mariner into the nebula, very much like the Matari nebula from Wrath of Khan. Lacano beams them over to the steam runner to get the Genesis device back, but Mariner's already started the countdown, so it can't be used by him. Freeman trans- Mar- transports Mariner out, and the Genesis device blows up, forming a new planet. And while the day is won, there is a teary goodbye to Tendi, who leaves um, to be with the Orions. Yeah. So, what's Lacano's plan? Help me out here. Because A, uh, a, a, he has this shield that is a system-wide shield, so it encompasses millions of planets. Or, you know, um, five planets at least. Five planets, um, millions of miles. Millions of miles. M- millions shit, of miles. Shit loads of, shit loads of stuff going down. Big old, big yeah. old shield. He's a fucking anarchist, man. He doesn't have a plan. He's an anarchist. This is where, this is where like, anarchy is a, as a political philosophy is is a bit like idealistic and yeah and like the whole point of anarchy is is it's so like there is no plan <laughs> like that's the whole yeah. point that's the whole point there is and, no there is no plan there's just do, like we don't like this so let's just mm. hang out like and and th- in, there is in no addition plan. to his 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 magic shield built by the uh, binars, three of the bra- binars, three, three binars, trinars. They should just call. They should just be called trinars. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, he's got this vessel that he designed. Where Where did it get built? Because it's like the one of the most advanced vessels we've ever seen. Really. Yeah. And another piece of wh- technology that comes from nowhere that does barely anything. Um, yeah. Other than it does, sets up the season. It just well, well, we find out that the technology isn't actually that special. It's like, I mean, what? It's it like, it's it's mm. a tran it it's a transporter, right? Yeah. It's just a it has a transport array. It transports the captain of the ship off. It transports yeah. debris there. Mm. Uh, yeah, th- that's. And it it um, tows them at warp back to somewhere, yeah. or you know, lets the lower deckers take take over. Uh, and and it's designed like I liked how at the start Beckett Mariner's like, um, you know, she's uh, she's talking about the design. It's all white. Mm. It's all white, and like it's des- it looks like a ship from Star Wars. Yeah, or, even or when he the gets reboot. It, <laughs> yeah, it it's even like got like ship. the round corridors from the reboot. Really, well, it's got like the round corridor, but it's it's all white, and the the captain's mm. chair is on like an elevated moving station, like like in Star Wars. Like it's a Star Wars ship. It's a super weapon. Yeah. It's it's a mm. Star Wars ship. So it's of course it's kind of stupid. Yeah. Star Wars ships are kind of stupid. But where, where I say like his plan is like. It's it's not even to to me. It's you know it doesn't work because he says he he broadcasts across whatever the Alpha and Beta quadrants and says lower deckers rise up and take over your ships pretty much and come join me in like the the biggest free fleet. Um, how are they supposed to join him if they can't get to his fucking system because there's a shield around it? Yeah, it is. Um, and they, and if that's they, like they the join me. Why can't the Cerritos like pretend that it's been took over by the lower deckers or like I thought that's take what over was another ship? Happen. Yeah, I thought, I, I thought was that happen. was like so dumb, so <laughs> dumb. Um, and um, and I yeah. get that like all of his stuff is ego based. Like later in the episode, he's like, "I finished top of my class," and it's like, "No, you fucking didn't. <laughs> you didn't finish at all." Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's and he's like, just found um, he's, a way to boss people round and stuff like that. Uh, but it's like, yeah, man. it's so dumb. It's like Marco Inaros from The Expanse. Yeah, that's but shit. But he had a better plan. Less handsome. Yeah, yeah he had a yeah. better plan, but he he also became much more corrupt and mental. Um yeah. Well, because he had more time to 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 soak in the the fucking narcissism. Um, yeah. Uh, but what a beautiful man! Uh, yeah, mm. um, I I thought it was funny at the start. Um, 
Well, actually, no, before I talk about that, I thought it was weird in that interaction where when we see, um, when when the ships all see Mariner, her mum mm-hmm. stands up and shouts, Mariner! It's like, that's her last name. Yeah. You, mo- yeah. like, you just called her daughter by her last name, mm. which is your maiden name, I think. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, well, yeah, it's a bit, yeah. Bit stupid on that front, but yeah. Um, but I did think it was funny. Like we kind of predicted that something like this would happen when, uh, when Rutherford and Boimler are talking about, like, are arguing about whether or not Nick Lucano looks like Tom Paris. Yeah, I I like that. That was funny enough. Um, it was pretty know, much exactly like, what we said would happen, just not who yeah. we thought would happen. Pretty much exactly, yeah. like, like yeah. Yeah, I, I don't see it. You know, I thought that was good. I've got that in my good it. categories. Having that, the little, um, the little quippy, the little quippy bits, the little quippy yeah. bits. There were some nice little quippy bits. Um, I liked. Um, I did like at the start when we got a uh, last time on Star Trek Lower Decks, mm. and now the conclusion, and now uh, a continuation. Yeah, it's a shame they couldn't quite... like roll out a. Um, my job, Bar- Barrett, yeah. uh, one from DS9 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And and the flashback as well. We got... Um, so we, we got the original actress uh, back for Saito. Um, mm-hmm. We obviously had um, Robert Duncan McNeil back. We had Wesley Crusher back. Um, yeah. There was... Again, Did you spot uh, Boothby? Booth- I didn't see Boothby. I wasn't looking for him. No. Was Boothby hanging out in the background? Yeah, he was. He was. Ah, cool. Uh, Like, again, like, friggin' Will Wheaton, probably one of his best portrayals as uh, Wesley Crusher. I'm telling you, man, he is a really good voice actor. Like, his his best acting is as a voice actor. He's so good. I do prefer when I don't have to see his face as well. (laughs) (laughs) Um... Yeah, we, so we got like we got we got Will we are doing a good voice actor, um, Ensign Sato sounding like her mother, uh, mm. uh, uh, Robert Duncan McDeal McDeal McDealio, um, and that McNeil. that kid that kid they killed, yeah, um, Jason like or something like that. Like I was watching, I was like, oh. so if that's him, that's her, that's him, that must be that kid they killed. Yeah. I, I did I did go, hold on though. There was another woman in Nova Squadron and where the fuck is she? But you know, Ugh, you don't have to Two women? I know, Ugh. two women. <laughs> well imagine when Mariner arrived on the scene there would have been three women in a shot together. Oh. Ugh. Ugh. Horrible. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Disgusting. Um, yeah. Uh, I um, th- uh, yeah, I thought that was good. I thought it was funny when uh, when uh, Lucano says, "People are gonna remember my name. They're gonna remember your name. They're gonna remember everyone's name because people are gonna remember Nova Squadron." And I'm like, yeah. "Are they? Are they gonna remember Nova Squadron, or are people gonna continuously, mistakenly call them Red Squad yeah, forever?" Yeah. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> Same every, almost every yeah. time. Yeah, the, like you know, it was a lot of the you know. Don't don't worry about the anarchists' plan because, like I say, there is no plan. They just okay. If, if just I don't have to against the machine, bro. Yeah, and and trying to demonstrate the you know the brilliance or their ego and the failing of Starfleet for not having them. No, the no even yeah, it's it's the ego. It's about the heart. It's about the passion. Because if they have yeah. a plan, if they have a plan, then then they're no better than stuff in their eyes. They have a plan. Yeah. They have a hierarchy. If they have like um, uh, health and safety measures, they are no yeah. better than the bureaucrats in the Federation. You know. And I, I thought it was, you know, they do repeat it a good couple of times where Mariner says to pretty much each of the ships that's following them, like, you know, what are you taking orders from this guy? And like, no, we don't take orders. We're all free spirited and stuff like that. And then Lacano yeah, comes then. up and says like. You follow her. <laughs> and like, okay, boss. Isn't it? <laughs> Up to a point. Uh, yeah, man. Because people, people, people want freedom. 
But what people need... To do what? The... They're in a system. They're locked in a system. <laughs> they need... But Literally, want... you know, they... they <laughs> They've they've shrugged off the oppressive system that they thought they were in, and they've locked themselves into a literal space system. Well, that's that's what I'm saying system. because what people really want is the freedom to roam within boundaries. Yeah, they want to do. They want, they, they want the free. They want the illusion of freedom, but the mm. safety of offense. Okay, the, you know. Um, did you know that it's been scientifically proven that free will isn't real and that uh, determinism is somewhere mm. between if you if your belief about the 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 universe lies somewhere between like um, not like hard determinism and then the soft determinism I'm like a I'm like a medium medium well determinism yeah that's that's where but I'm you're... at. But you were always going to be a medium well determinism. Oh my <laughs> dun, god! Dun, dun. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh my. Um, this my determinism's overdone. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 the snake eating its tail again. Um, Rob or us? Um, or, I, or sorry, us. just for the people listening, if they're not watching the video, every time I'm, I'm every time you hear me shuffling around and like sounding like I'm straining, it's because. I'm showing a tattoo I have it of of an Ouroboros that's in a really awkward position to show yeah. the, the camera. <laughs> you have to like do it. It's almost a Nazi salute that Ethan does every time he shows it off. No, it's not. It's not though. <laughs> it's not it, it's it's not almost all that at all. I'm not doing that. I'm just it's not. <laughs> yeah. Weirdly, he holds his copy of Mein Kampf in the other hand as well. It's so strange. I don't. I don't. I keep. I don't. I don't have it. I don't have it to hand. <laughs> it's not within it's be, arm's it's, reach. It's being rebound <laughs> because you've gone through it so many times. <laughs> uh, uh, well, so what, it, did, what it, did that? If, if I, if I can't complain shit? about Lacano's Sorry. plan, then can I okay. complain about the Cerritos plan? Yes, in this, absolutely. In that th this was my other main complaint, that they go and then it's like, oh, we'll try and get the Orion's help. Oh, we'll, we'll fight and we'll put Miglimo against their biggest person, which, you know, had one or two funny bits to it, I suppose, Miglimo fluffing up. But mm. what are you doing? You know, we've got Lucano <laughs> in here and we, we should be, yep. you know... Learning more about his, the what anarchy is to him, or anything about that. Learning about his ship. Learning about you know how Starfleet is reacting. You know, and we don't do any of that. Instead, we're looking at a bird fluff up and yep. um, be squashed by someone. It, it's so ridiculous. And then it's like, no, what I will do. And from from my memory of earlier in this season, when Tendy left, the running of of her house went to her younger sister um, mm -hmm. because she was the older sister that was left around. But if Tendi comes back, is Tendi in charge? We don't know any of this. Why? No, doesn't make any it's sense. It's so, so fucking stupid. Uh, um, that, and that was the perfect opportunity as well. Like that, like I said before, that's the part where I was like, they cut away and then they cut back to it. And it's just like, this should be a one and done thing. This is a perfect moment for like a rousing speech by the captain, mm. you know, like, a, you know, you, these people are anarchists. You guys are swashbucklers. How mm. long do you think it's going to be before these, uh, these guys fucking swinging around doing flips and shit is going to get in the way of you doing flips and shit? Yeah. You know, that was, that and, was and a perfect moment for a speech. And we very nominally get a, um, oh no, every deck is reporting in and they're all with us. But you know, why are the lower decks on the Cerritos apparently so immune to this um, Lacano being a good, you know, orator and pulling people onto his side? Have a bit of that. Have a bit of like why the Cerritos, you know, Cerritos strong the lower yeah. deckers feel integrated with um, the family. It is a family. It is not vying against each other. Have that rather than a bird fight a large Orion. And yeah. then to just crash the ship into um, whatever, the shield, 
just a tractor any comet from anywhere and yeah. just crash that in could because what are we doing again um, well they haven't had they haven't had the it's it's a few years before the um uh series of picard where the the mm. ship uses the the tractor beam to smash rocks so yeah maybe they don't know that that's the thing they could do yet um even though oh, it's they fucking, know they yeah they've definitely done it before um yeah no like i i do kind of like the um i do think it's it's it, it was a some in terms of their plan to just just ram the shit like it's a very Cerritos plan to like put all yeah. this work and effort into the final product being to just fucking Leroy Jenkins the fucking <laughs> the shield yeah. just like what do we need like we're gonna fix this battleship up we need to get these fucking engines going so we can fucking ram that shit we can fucking yeah. boom <laughs> like yes and I did like the the callback to the twin twains like that yeah. callback. I yeah. like seeing the captain's yacht, but it, it's just that overarching B plot for me until they punch through the shields is useless to me. Yeah. Other than the only reason I think they've done it is to send away Tendi and hopefully not forever. But at the at the end of TNG season four, so the same season we're on now, um mm. The final episode of that season, Worf went away and joined the Klingons. That's the episode where he walks down the corridor and it's like, oh, goodbye, Worf, you know, whatever. So it's like minor mirroring of that. But there's got to be better ways of doing it than, you know, all that shit. Or even, you know, just cut out the the battle bit. It's still a better way of doing it. Yeah. I don't know. Um... They did. That's I didn't. I didn't even think of that. That's good. That's good. That the mirroring. Yeah. It's mirroring. Like, it's like it's mirroring. It's like a poor. It's a tall poem. It's a tall poem. It rhymes. Yeah. Um. What was so that ship? You say it's what was it? A steam runner class. Steam runner. So um, was one of the new ships that were introduced for um first contact the movie. You know, with the Norway and all that, um, and then was uh, for me made famous by its inclusion in Star Trek Armada and Armada Two. It was the long range um, fighter or long range ship for for those games. Um, but you know that that's only in I think it's only in Beta Canon that's a long range um, ship firing long range torpedoes or some shit like that. Um, in whatever. Alpha Cannon or whatever, it's first contact, and then we saw it last in Picard season three, I think, and it we've seen it as well in Star Trek Prodigy. So it's a good little ship. Um, it's and a getting cool a, little ship. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it has ooh, a lot of that instant. design ethos of like the first mm. contact ships. You know, I like that the um, the on Star Trek Online. Um, mm. You can do a source of separation with it. Ooh. Nice. That move. Nice. That that module on ships doesn't work on every ship. Lovely. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. It's got yeah. facades. Like it looks like a face. It's got yeah, eyeballs. Yeah, they're, they're hidden by some of the hull, aren't they? That's cool. Yeah, it it's a good little like attack ship like design. Um, you know, it, it it has the separated engineering bit that I suppose the Cerritos has itself and a couple of ships do. So you're like, what's down there? Or like, how do people get there on a normal mm. day? Um, but yeah, I, I quite like it. I, I loved it in um, Armada. You just get a fleet of them and then you just like, Fire long range and just blow up someone's entire fleet, and then you're like, ha, "Fuck you." Cool. Good ships. Um, is, is this the term "steam runner" from something? Like, I've, maybe I've just fucked up my algorithm, but the only results for the word "steam runner" I'm getting of Star Trek. I, I think it's, I, I think it's modeled on like old boats that were like 
steam based <laughs> or or like you know coal whatever turning the maybe. back of the ship sort of thing maybe based. maybe um, they have to shovel dilithium into a into a furnace <laughs> by yeah. hand that's the one downside of those ships <laughs> yeah man yeah the one they're they're a great little ship but you will get cancer yeah um I like the way so, that yeah. she steals. I love the way that she steals that ship by using her mother's code. She's like five, six, seven, <laughs> five. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like that's a great little moment. All the, all the escape with the Genesis device, I thought was pretty good. Where she like tucks it into the um, first officer seat as well, and it's like, oh, you yeah. know, first officer um, Genesis device. Yeah. And she's like GD, like calling it GD later on, and like, oh, yeah. he, he's really in love with you, <laughs> you know. Mm. I loved how well, like I, I totally, I totally forgot about the fact that the Ferengi had a Genesis device, and then it was in the. Um... Like it was in the yeah. <laughs> previously on Star Trek. They were like, "That's yeah. a Genesis device that you're holding," and uh, mm. like you stop holding that Genesis device. You, yeah. and it's like, oh, this, this. I guess this little, is coming back. I guess, yeah. yeah, I guess this is gonna be back. The, the cool, uh, uh, but yeah, I like. I do the, think uh, it was great as well. Like the, you know, when he's disarming it or whatever, because it's a Ferengi one. It needs. Um, slips of latinum to to deactivate and he's like you put a paywall <laughs> yeah man um, sons of bitches yeah um but like yeah if, how, what did he think surely surely he um he thought when he's building his free navy or whatever like they're gonna need some mode of commerce some some way to 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 sort out commerce oh wait no because that would be mm. a plan yeah um, now they'll just die of you know, die bored as hell in that system, because whatever. Nah, man, they'll they'll be they'll be they'll be shagging and tattooing each other's faces and listening to weird EDM on asteroids mm. and shit, just like the fucking Belters in the Expanse. Yeah, the Belters had a better point. You know, they were taking the, more the, advantage of than yes. Than some people who <laughs> voluntarily signed up to be lower deckers. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't think <sighs> that um, the um, uh, a working class being getting threats of having their oxygen turned off if they don't work isn't the same as having they to can bunk choose with not people? to be on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you don't think that that oppression on a mass. Um, scale is the same as people having to bunk together. It's not a. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, these low deckers, they deserve yeah. everything they get to them, and and it, 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 they they just get away at the end, and you're just like, oh, what happened to them? And like, oh, who knows? You know, <laughs> there's pretty much like the admiral pretty much says like, shit, if I know that fleet yeah. is out somewhere, who who knows? Well, um, we don't know. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't even see any of the other, like um, the command officers from yes from last week's episode. No, we we, we don't even that. deal with like you know rescuing the rest of the lower deckers from that planet. They're just on the ship from like this the first second. Oh well, yeah, and I know they, <laughs> they were like, "We'll set up a beacon." Um, and then Mariner got transported away. So presumably they set up that beacon. But then we we miss all that, you know. Presumably, yeah. It must have happened. Yeah. It must have happened. Um, what's the deal with that system that they're in? It's got fucking ion storms. It's got a weird crystal debris field. Mm. Um, it, it doesn't it's see... It's got a it... dead planet, you know. It's got everything, hasn't it? It's got everything, but it's got the same name as a system from another episode of TNG, but it is not that system. Isn't it? Okay. Yeah, it's got like one letter different. Yeah, they do that a bit, don't they? We've run out of names for things. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, um, like, I do know that one alien race from the the original series are from the planet Zambia. Ah, so, uh, <laughs> like, 
Not, Do, I'm, I'm sure the writer of that wasn't like um, leaning into any, you know, uh, then either racist or thinking they're not racist. Uh, no, but like, <laughs> definitely, like, definitely, yeah. like, could have checked. Mm. <laughs> definitely could have checked. Maybe if they knew more about anything, more about the world, they'd have gone, what about an alien planet called, oh, Something strange. <laughs> so, so, Zambia. So, z- it's got a Z in it. Z- z- yeah. Um, I it. Um, my, my last gripe of the episode, or my last major gripe of the episode, is at, at whatever point it goes very Wrath of Khan, a, yeah. a movie they lean it into, Star Trek as a whole leans into far too much. Um, like to the extent that parts of it have been remade in another film. Um, mm-hmm. so there's there's the background music. There's the same shots of you know the ships going up and down levels, and when Lacano gets exploded like Khan did, it forms a planet, just mm-hmm. like you know Khan did whatever. Yeah. And then then at the end they're just like, um, and we'll name the planet Lacano. Um, I I. And I, I wrote it down because I was just like, you cannot be shitting me. I guess he did some good after all. What? What the fuck are you talking about? Um, he did some good. Yeah, but did he though? Yeah, he but did, did he though? He did some good. And they're just like, yeah. oh, because it's a refugee planet, he did some good. And it's like, it. you know, all, all you need to do to fix that line is, um, I guess some good came of this. Not... I guess he did some good. Yeah, this he guy didn't do who that good cuz he didn't do good at all. No, he did he did war crimes. He did war <laughs> crimes. He did war crimes. Yeah. Like uh, he, did, he didn't do good. He, did. he stole. He stole. He um, kidnapped. He stole a weapon of mass mass uh, <laughs> destruction. <laughs> it's <stole laughs> and it's just like I guess he guess he did good, you know. Yeah, but we'll name this cool. planet after him. Pretty Can you cool imagine, like, he... <laughs> after Wrath of Khan or whatever, they were like, and we'll name this planet Khan because he did some real good. <laughs> How fucking ridiculous would that be? Yes. Are you kidding uh... me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Such man. the dumbest shit in the world. Yep. Uh... Planet Lacano. Planet Lacano. Lacan. Oh. Lacan. Khan. 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 Like the movie. I guess he did some good after all. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, kind of like um, uh, something. Hell. Something. Hit like, <laughs> um, um, like how, wait a minute, I know. Kind of like how they renamed Hiroshima the Enola um, Gay. Yeah. Because, because that bomb... Without that bomb, we wouldn't have the movie Barefoot again. So I guess well, that then bomb I did guess some it good. did some good after <laughs> it all. Did some good after all. Fucking yeah. hell! Uh, ridiculous. Is it more or less ridiculous than Captain Boimler? Yeah, I. I can get over that because it sets up what I think is next season. We we had a, a season of bold Boimler. And then yeah. I can see next season, you know, he's got a he's been in the captain's chair for real and he's got a real hunkering for it now. Like he's got a taste for that chair. Um Yeah. So, uh, but like, you know, and he was left in charge. There'd be millions of people on that ship that outrank him still, but you know, fine. Yeah. But he was left in charge at a time when the, the ship actually wasn't doing much. Like the, the yeah. focus was all on the captain's yacht and the, the, the warship ramming the, the shield. So it's kind of yeah. like it's kind of like, you know, from a, from a hospitality background, it's kind of like being left in charge of the pub on a Sunday morning. Yeah, like there's no one, there's no one fucking coming in. Like, yeah, easy job, you know, just go through yeah. the motions, sort of thing, you know. Yeah, pull one clean, for the regulars, the regular, the regular drugs. Fucking clean some it. Yeah, yeah. Well, mm. um, not as good as when uh, when uh, when I was watching it, and they were like, oh good captain voice i was like yeah not as good as fucking when kelvin sulu 
was acting captain for 10 minutes and immediately threatened to kill a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> this is actor Captain Sulu, and if you fucking move, I will fucking blow you out of the stars. I will kill I, you all. I, I will, will kill you all. up. <laughs> like, yeah. like, fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he's got a taste for it now. I like the um, uh, Tillin in the, this episode. So she's the one who suggests um, the uh, twin twains because she learned yeah. that. And then at the end, she's you know she's found value in being on the Cerritos compared to yeah. just trying to get back to the Vulcan fleet or whatever. So what, what was, like Tillin in this. Yeah. What, what was her line? Uh, so uh, like, she says so Cerritos uh, strong at some point. No, it's something about like unorth- illogical methods can produce logical results. Mm. Uh, which yeah. is b- very unscientific. But yeah. But yeah. It's good. It, it it works and it's, you know. And um considering Tendy's not going to be there for probably f- Hopefully just an episode, maybe two episodes or something like that, two or three. They yeah, need probably. a fourth person to fill that gap in a mm-hmm. in blue, and she can be mm-hmm. that fourth person. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um Yeah. And I like I liked her saying she was gonna stay there to be Tendy's bestie. But she knew Tendy was going to leave. Maybe she forgot. Yeah. Maybe she forgot about yeah. that. I forgot about that bit. Yeah, fine. <laughs> Um, whatever. Um, I'm down to my miscellaneous stuff now. The on Lacano's, I, I noticed it after we'd, you know, after I was editing last week. Um, Lacano, you know how he has an emblem on his um jacket, mm. on his on his jacket, and then on oh, his. Oh yeah, I saw that. That's cool. It's the Starburst Benuva. Um, yeah. It's what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, I thought that was good. Oh, um, that was cute. I thought yeah, that was sweet. Because yeah. that's the part uh, that's the part of his life that's ruined him. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's so probably he's sad. With him. And he's probably sad about killing his friend. He, which I he don't did. think he is. I don't, actually, yeah, no, they barely mentioned him. Yeah. <laughs> they barely mentioned him. Yeah. Maybe he's proud of it. Mm. Um, yeah, that that's kind of my miscellaneous notes done other than what I had for a message of the episode. Do you have any other miscellaneous or any no, other notes? No other, no other miscellaneous notes, just um, uh, my message for the episode, yeah. What did you have as a message? Uh, so we mentioned earlier that like Lucano did some war crimes. And he's talk- well, at the end, he's talking about, um, you know, this is, this is how I'm going to get my life back. This is how I'm going to... Mm. This is how I'm going to get my life back. And, um, you know, my my message for the episode is that, like, war crimes are not a good way to get your life back if mm. you didn't graduate from Starfleet Academy. Yeah. Because, like, it worked for Cisco. It worked for Janeway. Mm. It, it... Kirk probably did a good couple. Kirk in, probably in did time. a few. Yeah. Uh, Picard, yeah. maybe, you know, uh, Locarno, yeah. you didn't graduate. You weren't the top of your class. You can't just go doing war crimes. Yeah. And I, and I had the um, just copied verbatim from Mariner. Don't let anger define your life. Um, you know, considering he's so mad at being kicked out of Starfleet for fucking up flying. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's so mad at Starfleet for kicking him out of the academy for killing that guy yeah for killing a child it, it's a good job wesley <laughs> wesley wasn't around because he you know you can imagine this guy would be like oh that wesley crusher i'll kill that fucking kid and then that kid turns into into an omnipotent god and you're like fuck it kid <laughs> no, like i thought like i'm surprised we didn't get another wesley like wesley and the koala at the end with yeah. with Nick like after Nick gets Genesis. Yeah. Yeah. Could have could have should have would have yeah. um for yeah. it really. Um but but since we're since we're at the end of uh this season, um I, I had a, a bit of an extra bit which was 
Um, season five we know is in production at the moment. Do you have any hopes for it, or, or what do you think will happen? Predictions um, or I whatever. Think, you know, um, you know, we'll get we'll get a couple of episodes of of fucking, you know, dominatrix of the winter constellations. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm wondering if her sister, after if her thing is, you know, after all that trying to get the power, she's like, why would she possibly want Tendi back unless it's because she realized she actually doesn't want it and she wants her to come and take it. Um, yeah. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some more of the purple room and the black mountain. Yeah, I love that shit. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, um, I don't know what's what's the uh, what's so season five. What's a good like season five thing? Maybe you know what's what's a good um Star uh, Trek five thing. Maybe we'll get um. It's Star Trek five is the search for God. They could always yeah, go man. and try and talk the <gasps> koala. Hopefully, we'll get the koala. Yeah. Break what does group, a koala need with what does a koala need with a starship? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about you? I've got Bold Boimler turning into um trying to be a Captain Boimler. Mariner hopefully not doing any we're not gonna have any self sabotaging episodes of Mariner again now mm-hmm. after this. Uh, to Lynn in a bigger role. Um, Tendy to return, hopefully not that late into the season, because I don't want... Imagine if this is them writing Tendy out completely. I'd be I'd be pissed with that, because I, I yeah. do like the Tendy character. And we haven't gone back to uh, clone Boimler at all. No. Um, you know, Section 21 Boimler. We did. We didn't go back to past Rutherford either. We didn't. We we didn't return to any of Rutherford's memories. No, no. Well, uh-huh. he did. He get a raised. I'm trying to think back to that episode because it was whoever wins that race in their mind um, wins the body or the brain. Doesn't yeah, it? but some, something still raised. happened. Something still happened. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll get and, um, we'll get some goodie as well. We saw Good G in this episode. We did, we did. He was helping. Um, he's a good boy, Good G. He's a good boy. He was helping people in engineering. Boy. He was like, "Yeah, do you need me to do some?" <laughs> Are you trying to change a warp core? <laughs> Are you trying to change a warp Are you tr- core? I'm trying to write a yeah. letter. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> that this season is still set in the year that Titan um, that Riker gives up. Command of the Titan, um, his son's born or whatever. Um, you oh, know, maybe we'll see his kid's die. funeral. Maybe we'll we'll see his kid's funeral. <laughs> the kid dies a, a couple years after because he's a, a a boy, like he's a you know how many years old when he okay. dies on that planet. Aww. but he he he's born this year, <laughs> so Aww. We, oh, fucking kids. Um, yeah. And, and we're we're only uh, two years off when Prodigy begins as well, um, so cool. could be coming up. Oh, then, we need to get some Janeway up in this piece. Yeah, man, haven't done haven't done any Janeway. It, oh. It's also before um, each Eb got his eye pulled out, so it's before Seven of Nine when like real Fenris Ranger sort of stuff. So you could have Janeway, you could have um, the Doctor, um, you know, have some characters from something, you know, I don't know. And maybe don't do Wrath of Khan again. I can't do Wrath of Khan again. No. Um, (laughs) Yeah. yeah, um, What's what's another good season? Or maybe they could do some homages to season five of Enterprise. Because it didn't fucking happen. Um, oh, no. oh the, man, if they... the show gets cancelled, then they will be doing a homage to yeah. season five of Enterprise. They, they do keep writing about Mike, uh, whatever his name is, Mike Mahano or whatever, does keep yeah. writing about wanting to try and integrate more Enterprise stuff in there. Yeah. And we got a mention of the Zindi this week. Um, we did. 
Yeah. So, I don't know, maybe we'll get some Enterprise stuff somehow. Yeah, man. Enterprise is showing, yeah. you know, like, you, you know, every now and then you get, like, a really nice reference to Enterprise, and it's never mocking it. It's always like, mm. you know, you can tell that, that a lot of the people working on on Star Trek now do have some love for Enterprise. As well they should. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah I agree. I, as much as I yeah. like making fun of Enterprise... It's just low hanging fruit. I I do like Enterprise. Yeah, Enterprise by itself is is a good um, I don't know show. It's it's the people and the stories on there that aren't great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Reed is a yeah. fucking gross. He Reed is gross. Reed is. He's a got a personality though. He's put a that fucking against, weirdo. Put so... that against um, Travis, the man without a personality. He doesn't need a personality. <laughs> he is handsome. He doesn't need he he has he has like there's a couple of episodes where he's wearing a vest and it's like Jesus, yeah. that guy was ripped. Well, just think every week he doesn't have to do anything. He does has no lines to learn at all. He just spends that in the gym. <laughs> yeah. yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. No, poor guy. Yeah. Poor poor guy getting paid to sit in a chair and not say anything. I have to sit in a chair and say stuff and don't get paid as much as that. Um, yeah. yeah. I do get paid to sit in a chair and say things, but it yeah. is mostly like just have you turned it off and on again? <laughs> um, no, you can't yeah. do that. No, you can't do that. You can't carry out that weirdly specific request. Sorry. Yeah. Or you might be able to, but I can't do it. But I'll raise you a ticket, and an engineer might be in touch. Mm. Maybe. No Maybe. promises. No promises, though. No promises. Yeah. Uh, gosh, no yeah. Star Trek for ages now. No Star Trek for I, ages. I know. Have a couple of weeks off um, failing frequency, and then we can think of something to, to fill the gap. Yeah, man. We, got, we, we, we got can both mu mutually get back to... Um, a stitch in time at some point. A stitch in time. Um, uh, there's Doctor Who coming up. We could cover Doctor Who. There's... Um, the, oh, we could just... We could... Uh, I don't know why I'm looking around the room for ideas. Um, we could... <laughs> we could talk about uh, this. Ooh. Ooh. Um... Uh, you know, any recommendations for things for people to watch? Yeah, other than what, Star what, Trek. A anything you want us to talk about at all? Um, yeah. Do let us know. Maybe, maybe we can um, break down do a movie at a time, or something yeah. like that. Or yeah. what are your favorite episodes or least favorite episodes? Something yeah. like that. Or um, you know, we what, could do non-Star Trek. We could do a couple of supplementals. Yeah. You know, we can't talk about Dune. Because Dune's yeah. not coming out forever, which I'm That's... depressed about. Mm. Um, but Doctor Who. You could say out. you were you were Dune about it if you were in Newcastle. Are you feeling Dune? I am feeling Dune. <laughs> there you I'm go. Dune, I'm Dune in the Dooms. I'm Dune in oh. the Dooms because of it. Um, I was uh... hoping you were doing well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Um, oh, uh, if anyone, because we only have one part of it. I'm just looking at the bookshelf. We only have one part of that Doctor Who Star Trek crossover. So if anyone wants to send me a copy of the rest of it, because it's really expensive now for some reason, then we can maybe review that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fucking. Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. Figure we'll, 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 work, we'll work something out. Have you got any recommendations for like shows for people to watch? I've got one. I've got two. Bodies. Bodies. Okay, yeah. Bodies is really good. And The Devil's Hour. If you want some good British time travel related sci-fi, Bodies is fun. And mm -hmm. um, The Devil's Hour is like, what if the Doctor, played by Peter Capaldi, was a weird drifter killer? Like that. Yeah. You know, You've mentioned living this one in a last van. Time, I think. Yeah. Oh man, it's so fucking good, so mm. good. Yeah, I, I might get to it. I, 
I, I still need to finish off a bit of the Yellowstone prequels. Um, and then, yeah, then I'm a, a free birdie when it comes to content. Woohoo! Mm. Mm. Um, Robot. Robot. Um, yeah, should we call that it, it then for this yeah, week? Um, yeah. Ask you to do all the usual, you know, yeah, like, man. comment, subscribe, um, tell a friend, rate us on whatever, if it's the podcast Draw version. Draw me a little picture. Draw Ethan a picture. And yeah, send draw it me to, a picture. Uh, you, send, you've got his it. socials in the links below. Um, yeah, mate, send it. Send me a little picture and I'll put it on my fridge. Hey, listeners, draw a picture of dick butt. <laughs> no way. Never not amusing. <laughs> that would be rude. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if that that's it for this week, um, then it's just up for Ethan to say... Live long and prosper. I say, I say, I say. I say, I say. I say. Oh, I do declare that you should live long and prosper, you motherfuckers. And peace and long life, you double dumbasses.